Hi guys, welcome to Dubs Only Sports. Uh, before we get into anything, make sure to follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter at Dubs Only Sports. And then if you want to watch the full episodes, uh, you can catch those on Spotify and YouTube. Uh, this is going to be episode 18. And for this episode, because we didn't really, well, we were wrong. Straight up, yeah, we, were we were wrong. wrong. I mean, yeah. The Cowboys, you know, did what they were kind of supposed to do. I mean, let's be real. Oh, yeah, 100%. The Cowboys, 100%. The the Cowboys needed to win that game, bro. The Cowboys needed to win that game. It just would have been so storybook if, like, they yeah, kept the they postseason lost. streak yeah. alive. You know, it, it was just – it would have yeah. been funny. We like the jokes. Yeah. We hate the Cowboys. It is what it is. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, Cowboys, Bucks, analysis. We've got <laughs> – we've got money. I can't there. even – I. oh, dude, this is so sad because, like, Everything was setting up perfectly. Tom Brady was about to beat the Cowboys to go 8-0 against the Cowboys in his career. Tom Brady in the playoffs with a terrible team was just it was just meant to be for him to move on and for the Cowboys to keep choking in the playoffs like they always do, but it didn't happen. Credit to the Cowboys. They played an amazing game. They were clearly by far the better team. They absolutely dismantled the Buccaneers. Yeah. But I think that was like what everyone should have expected to happen. I just think that everyone thought that Tom Brady would go to like another level and then the Buccaneers would just clutch up and turn into something that they actually weren't including myself including you everyone thought the Buccaneers were gonna overperform what they actually were but they did not and the Cowboys are moving on to the NFC divisional rounds to face the San Francisco 49ers both of our Super Bowl picks were 49ers so I think everyone knows how we're gonna pick this game but anyways let's get into Cowboys 49ers in San Francisco just give, give your little preview of like what you think is going to happen and your prediction for the game. I mean, come on. The <laughs> Cowboys, you know, it was nice of you to show up. Um, You beat the Cowboys in the wild card round, which was probably the best matchup you could have asked for. I felt like you would have lost to the Vikings. Um, If the Eagles uh, no, didn't no, get the... No. The Cowboys would not have lost to the Vikings. They beat them 40 to 3 early in the year. The Cowboys would have beaten the Vikings. The Cowboys are a good team. I think that everyone gets this wrong when when we hate on the Cowboys. I think they don't understand that. We understand that the Cowboys are a good team. It's just yes. that they their culture is not strong enough, and they always melt under the pressure. So yep. I think we all thought that the Cowboys were going to fold this week, and they just they didn't do that. They showed the actual team that they were instead of folding under the pressure. But I feel like if you look at the NFC and you look at the most like the best teams in the NFC, I think you have to have the Cowboys in the top three, mm-hmm. alongside the Eagles and the 49ers because. Their talent level speaks for itself. They're clearly better than the Vikings. The Vikings have been frauds all year, like we exposed before. But I think it's just in this game against the 49ers, they have to play the best team in the NFC right now because the Eagles yeah. aren't healthy. The 49ers are the best team in the NFC right now. They have all these weapons. They have Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, and then their defense is stacked with just studs all around the defense. So... We don't even need to get into Brock Purdy because Brock Purdy is just him, dude. Brock Purdy is just there. Brock, Purdy, Brock Purdy is just there, bro. The Mr. Mr. Irrelevant is just turning heads, bro. He's just that guy. He's like one of the best quarterbacks in the last in the last seven weeks. He's probably like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He's just shown up. You can see he has that little flair, that swag. He has the inta- intangibles. So I really like Purdy. I just think when you look at this game, the Cowboys played a flawless game against the Buccaneers. They did everything perfectly. Didn't they? Dak had the best game of his career. No mm-hmm. turnovers. I think he had five touchdowns, a few rushing touchdowns. He just do- took over the game. Okay, and they were facing a Buccaneers team that's offensive line was very bad, that defense was very bad, and that had an old and immobile quarterback that really struggled at the beginning of the game and made some crucial mistakes. That interception in the end zone was a stupid interception, and it totally changed. Just the outlook of the game. The, the Cowboys still probably would have won, but it just totally changed the momentum of the game. So I think when you look at this game, being in San Francisco with a 49ers team that's competent, you could say because the Buccaneers are not competent. We have the the 49ers who are a competent team. They have weapons all around, and they don't make stupid mistakes. I just think that it's going to be way too much for the Cowboys to overcome. And when we look at just – the Cowboys have a very good defensive line. Their back end has struggled a little bit, but they played really well against the Buccaneers. The amount of weapons they're going to have to face against the 49ers. I mean, Christian McCaffrey ran for over 130 yards or uh, all purpose yards against the Seahawks. Debo Samuel had over 100 yards receiving. Ayuk mm-hmm. is one of the best upcoming wide receivers in the NFL. George Kittle is one of the best blocking and catching tight ends in the NFL. So they just have to face so many weapons. And I don't think they'll be able to, to contain that enough. And their offense is good, but they're going up against the best defense in the NFL in the 49ers. And I just feel like 
Dak is bound to have not as good a game as he did against the Buccaneers. He played perfect against the Buccaneers. I don't think he's going to be able to play perfect against the 49ers. I think the 49ers will turn the ball over. Um, they'll get they'll get a few extra possessions, maybe a fumble, maybe a few interceptions because Dak led the league in interceptions. Maybe they'll get a few, but I just and especially I think this is an underrated aspect of the game. Everyone was making fun of Brett Maher for missing four extra points against the Buccaneers, and it didn't matter for that game. But genuinely speaking, like no jokes, like jokes aside, this actually is a big issue for this game because the 49ers will hold the Cowboys to field goals because their defense is so good. The Cowboys are not going to score in the red zone every single time. Mm-hmm. So if the Cowboys are forced to kick field goals and they're not confident in their kicker, that's a big issue. And also, this could be a very tight game. If you miss an extra point, that could totally change the game. So yeah. I feel like the Cowboys might have to go for two on some possessions. They if they if the kicker if Maher struggles in the first few kicks of the game, they might have to replace him or just go for two. So I feel like that could have a, a big impact on the game. I just think that the, the 49ers are a more complete team that makes less mistakes. So I'm gonna go with the 49ers. Yeah, I mean, you know, completely agree. I feel like your point about, you know, like we're all making jokes about like Mar, like, oh, he definitely bet on the under, like all this crap, yeah. you know. And it's just like, you know, like you like like Yes, like we could treat it as a joke just because like it was not a close game like at all. Like the Cowboys literally just looked like the better team the entire game. Yeah, the Buccaneers like, you know, they started cooking some things up towards the end of the game. But at that point, it was just too little too late. So, yeah, um, yeah like you really have to take into account that like the Cowboys are not going to be scoring a touchdown on every single red zone drive. There will be the drives where they will be forced to score a field goal just to put points up there. And if Brett Maher is coming up there and he's shanking field goals like he did against the Bucks then you know the 49ers not only will play better than the Cowboys but the Cowboys will literally help them win the game which is the last thing you want against a such a talented team this year so yeah yeah, I mean we both think that the 49ers are going to win the Super Bowl like yet to see something that makes us really go otherwise and I mean like you know they're uh, like their slow start against the Seahawks for them just to explode against them in the second half really goes a long way. It was literally like watching yeah. two separate teams and two separate halves and two separate games. Yeah, so I think it just shows, yeah, it just shows that they have a, an identity and a culture, something that the chargers don't have. You can c- contrast it with the chargers where they just blew the game in the second half because they couldn't keep it up. I think it really shows the identity and culture of this team because they didn't play well in the first half. They let the Seahawks take the lead to halftime. But then they came out in the second half and they put their foot down and they just absolutely dominated the Seahawks. They they blew it open by like 20 points. So I think it just shows that the 49ers are met, like they they mean business and they want to win the Super Bowl after all the stuff that's happened. They lost in the NFC Championship last year. They lost in the Super Bowl a few years ago. They really want yeah. to prove a point. And I just think that they're motivated and they have a team that's just full of dogs, just full of absolute dogs that just really want to win games. Mm-hmm. Got that dog in them. They got yeah. that dog in them. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we obviously thought that Bucks were going to win that right. game. Well, we didn't they're like, cool. well, it wasn't like we thought that oh, the Bucks were going to win because they're the better team. We just thought, team. wouldn't we it be have... funny? Yeah. It would have been like you know. the, the most story big thing to happen, but it didn't happen. Now it's 49ers, mm-hmm. Cowboys, and we both think the 49ers will win. But if the Cowboys prove us wrong, then kudos to them. But we don't think it's going to happen. But we got to talk about the Cowboys kicker because that was an atrocious performance that he had. That was one of the most pathetic performances ever. I don't think a kicker has ever missed four extra points in the playoffs in a single game. I don't think they've missed four extra points in a row ever. And this happened for this to happen in a playoff game. Thank God for the Cowboys that it was meaningless because if they lost the game due to Brett Maher missing like four, four extra points, points, it would have been the most Cowboys thing to happen ever. Like it, yeah. it, it just. It was such a Cowboys thing to happen. It was so funny because they would cut to Jerry Jones celebrating the touchdowns. And then whenever he missed the extra point, he's like, oh, like what's going on? And it was just, it was such a Cowboys thing. It was hilarious. But yeah, that I mean. Prescott was like literally on the sidelines yeah, being like, why are we not just season. going for two yeah. at that point? And yeah, that's, no, brutal. that is a good point. That is a valid point. Why did the Cowboys not go for two after the Maher missed the second extra point, for example? Yeah. Because at that point, if he's missed two in a row, I know you don't want to. Sh- the thing is, there's two sides of this argument. The one side is you, if you go for two, then the, the kicker's confidence just goes away because you're just you have no trust and faith in him, which mm-hmm. is partially reasonable because he's missed two extra points. But the, on the other side, you want to like make sure that he's like confident going into the next game. But on the other yeah. side, like what if it's a close game and you actually need to win the game? You probably have to go for two. I think the Cowboys got lucky that it wasn't a close game because they could just let the kicker just keep missing. Then he finally made the last one. So maybe, maybe he'll have some confidence going into the next game. But he did miss an extra point in the previous game. He's missed he missed like five in a row. So 
I don't know if you can really trust him. And this is a big game for him to kick field goals and extra points against the 49ers, as we discussed earlier, because it's going to be a close, closer game, presumably. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like, I don't know what they do. They signed another kicker of this guy, you know, from the Chargers, but they said that they're going to stick with Maher for now. But I wonder in this game, do you think that if Maher misses like the first extra point, do you think that they're going to start going for two? Do you think they're going to bring in the other kicker? Do you think they're going to stick with Maher? Like, what do you think they're going to do? I feel like, I feel like a lot of it does depend on like, like where they're at in the game, like what the score is, all that kind of stuff. But like, ultimately, like, generally i feel like they will keep maher in the game like if he misses that first extra point they will keep him in the game but towards the end of the game i feel like without a doubt like have as like if he had missed a extra point in the beginning of the game i feel like at the end of the game like you said they might bring in the backup quarterback that they just got from the chargers or not quarterback backup kicker that they just got from the chargers but I feel like going for two is a little risky because, again, the yeah. 49ers defense is, like, unstoppable. So you might as well yeah. just take the free points off of the kick instead of, like, actually trying to basically score another touchdown against, like, one of the most flawless defenses in the nation this year. So, yeah. um, you know, I just feel like – I feel like one of the things now, and, like, especially for, like, a lot of Cowboys fans out there, is that, you know, you get to – field you get to field goal range you know 49ers stop you on you know like third down like whatever and you got to kick a field goal before it was like oh, okay you know we'll, we'll take the field goal we're down by how many or we're up by however now it's like you can't even think about that anymore you have to yeah, go oh the crap yeah. like brett mark Will who missed this it? field goal yeah yeah i mean you know and um they're playing they're playing in san francisco it's an outdoor stadium i don't know what the forecast is for the game could be windy and if it's windy you know Maybe that makes it worse. Maybe because, you know, Maher is going for like opposite ends of the goalpost. Maybe the window just like push it in and that's what he's practicing for. But who knows? Yeah, and the, the, funny, the funniest part is that to contrast the Cowboys and the Niners, the Cowboys have this kicker, Brett Maher, who's missed five. He, he missed five extra points in a row, four straight in the Bucks game. Then he finally made his last one. The best part of all of this is that the 49ers kicker, Robbie Bolt, has never missed a field goal or extra point in the postseason in his career. Yeah, he's like thirty five of thirty five on extra points and twenty seven and twenty of twenty seven on field goals. It's like absolutely ridiculous, and I think it's just that's a that's a very important piece of this game because it's everyone thinks that it's going to be a close game unless the Niners just absolutely route the Cowboys. No one thinks that the Cowboys are going to go into San Francisco and just route the 49ers. So everyone presumes it's going to be a very close game. So I feel like that's an interesting aspect of the game, and I feel like like let's say we have 49ers twenty nine, Cowboys twenty seven. It's like one minute left in the game right yeah. and it's fourth down fourth down and five at the 49ers like 30 yard line do you mm-hmm. go for it because do you want to kick it do you, would you rather kick a 50 yard field goal and have the chance of missing the field goal because your kicker is unreliable and also giving the other team a minute left to score a field goal or a touchdown or would you rather go for it on fourth and five but then if you don't make it you lose so it's like it's kind of a big decision it has a big impact on this game that is mm. kind of unseen, but yeah, I, I yeah. just don't know what they're going to do. And I feel like, you know, it's important for Maher as a professional to not let like the last game affect the next game, because yeah. if he's going into it, like, damn, like I really missed four out of five extra points yesterday. What am I doing wrong? I suck. What the yeah. hell? So he just can't, yeah. he just can't, you know, he, he's got to, yeah. he's, you know, hopefully, well, you know, since he is a professional, he gets paid to do this. So his mindset has to be clear, has to be, you know, very focused, very precise, especially when kicking field goals, because it's not easy. A lot of people no. think that kicking field goals is like the easiest thing in the world. It is not. Trust me, it is not. No. Okay. Yeah. To get the angle on the ball, right. To get the right foot angle, the right launch angle, and to have all that strength just go straight to your leg. It's not the easiest thing in the world. So, you know, we're not like, we're not trying to say, oh, we yeah. can kick field goals better than Brett Barr. No, no. A lot of you in our comment section seem to think that whenever we're like ragging on players, you think that we ourselves are better than the players that we're ragging about. We're not saying that. We're just saying that in this instant, you know, for a professional kicker, for this, this is, is their you know, job. This, this is, is their, their job. job. And we're saying that they're not doing their job up to their standards. Okay. Yes. If you guys think that we're not doing our job up to our standards, then you should comment that. But- yeah. But they you can't be not, like you. Why I haven't seen you kick field goals at the Super Bowl. It's like yeah, because we're not. First of all, we're not professional athletes. But it's actually it's actually funny, and I really like it because they're like they're like, oh, 
like when we talked about the Aaron Rodgers video, they're like, oh yeah, like what if you ever accomplished in your life? And I'm like, dude, like Aaron Rodgers <laughs> is a fraud. Like that has nothing to do with what I accomplished in my life. And to say that, like, it's like, it's like, it's actually hilarious because it's like, I'm doing my job, he's doing his job, but he's not doing his job well enough. So I'm criticizing him for not doing his job well enough. So yeah, that's, I mean, I'm not really, I don't know, but it's, we're it's just, funny. We're just okay. two opinionated guys. Like, yeah, there, dude, you know, there's the, nothing more to it. it. Yeah, dude, we're here for the comedy, bro. Like, how, stop, everyone's so serious, bro. Everyone needs to calm we're down. Here everyone needs to, we're here for the we're jokes. We're here for the jokes. We're here for the laughs. We're here for the jokes. Yeah, I know. We're here to entertain people, bro. We're not. We're not here to like say like everything has to be a fact. Okay, like come yeah. on, guys, come on. Like we let's, let's... we have been getting some unreal comments in our in our Instagram and TikTok. The other day, I damn well read a five paragraph essay on like oh, why yeah. Lamar Jackson and Justin Fields trade wouldn't work, and I'm just like the fact that people not only are this dedicated but have the time to I do know. this kind of crap. It it bothers. I'm eight. I'm an eighteen. Okay, I'm eighteen years old, right? I don't have as many responsibilities as a lot of the people on Instagram who are adults with you know yearly salarized jobs, all this kind of stuff, right? But the fact that I'm constantly seeing that these kinds of people are the ones commenting on our posts are just like, wow, like what are we doing? Like the priorities are not there for you guys. We should and- make. We should. We should make a video talking about like like addressing the hate comments like we're gonna we'll, we're we'll going to we're, we're going gonna to we're gonna we're gonna find our best comments our favorite comments we're gonna go yeah. through all of them we're gonna have a video does it because you know up yeah. until you know like as soon as the super bowl ends and we have like a little bit of a dry spell between like yeah. football ending and then um and then baseball starting because it's pretty constant there's going to be soccer yeah. there's going to be basketball but there's nothing big we're in the middle of the season we're not even at the yeah. all-star break for the nba yet so yeah. we're, we're going to be, there's going to be a little bit of a little bit of a dry spell. And in that dry spell, we will definitely have a video addressing some of our favorite comments because I immediately think of so many comments when we start talking about our yeah. comment section, because there are some so good funny. ones. There yeah. are some no, we're funny gonna, ones in there. Yeah. We're going to have a, we're going to have a video addressing the hate comments. It's going to be absolutely hilarious. It's just meant for a laugh. Don't take it too seriously. We'll blur yeah. the names out, but we'll just, we're going to show these funny comments because they're actually hilarious. So like, it's, it's really funny, but now we need to get into it. So we talked about Cowboys or Cowboys 49ers and we talked about yep. Cowboys Bucks. Yep. On the other side of it is that the Bucks lost to the Cowboys. And now Tom Brady, 45 years old. He I think he might be a free, he's a, I think he's a free agent right now. Or mm-hmm. even yeah, so he's a free agent right now. Everyone's saying that he wants to leave the Bucks. Everyone like Julian Edelman came out and said that he's definitely gonna leave Tampa Bay. He's had an amazing career, definitely the GOAT of um, the NFL. Everyone knows that. he Even now, he's still playing at a relatively high level. He had some deficiencies on his team, but he's still a solid uh, NFL quarterback. Mm-hmm. Where do you think he's going to land next year? Okay, so <clears throat> I had my hot take about Lamar Jackson, right? And we're still waiting on him to go to the Raiders. But in my idea, I'm a trade genius, okay? Mel Kuyper, I'm like the Mel Kuyper of like trading. He does the drafts. I'll do the trading. It is what it is, right? But for Tom Brady, I feel like the thing about Tom Brady and the thing that a lot of teams need to consider is that you can't, no one's going to sign Tom Brady long-term, right? He is not going to sign like a multi-year, multi-million dollar contract. Because A, he's just really not worth it that right, like right now, like in his prime, yes. And going to the Buccaneers, yes. Like coming off, off of the Patriots, he was a very good quarterback, arguably still in his prime, but he was getting older, you know, the bones are getting weaker. It's getting harder to, you know, just like wake up in the morning and play football, a game that's very physical, a game that, you know, requires a lot of physical effort. So you need to, we we need to consider the fact that he needs to go to a team that not only will just need a quarterback for a couple of years, but aren't really looking to win a Super Bowl with Tom Brady. Because I don't think it's possible. I feel like no matter what team he goes to, you, you can't win a Super Bowl with him. You don't think you can win a Super Bowl with him? Okay, because he's he's just like you have to you have to keep in mind he is getting older. I watched him play in the Cowboys no, but game. But he literally he literally won a Super Bowl two years ago. Like it's yes, not like he, it, it was that long ago. Like everyone is gonna do this again. I, I, everyone made this like, mistake. I made this mistake. You made this mistake. Everyone made this mistake saying Tom Brady can't win it anymore. He's washed. Yes. Famously, Max Kellerman said that he fell off a cliff. Everyone yep. said that. Yeah. And as much as everyone wants to doubt Tom Brady, I'm not ready to doubt Tom Brady. Yeah. I think that 
if you look at this year, he did not play as well. But I feel mm-hmm. like I'm not making excuses for him, but I think think one of the reasons why is you look at that Cowboys game, his offensive yeah. line gave him no time. Precisely. Abs- like the Buccaneers no team that won the Super Bowl was stacked. Mike yeah, Evans was on that team. Offensive line. Gronk offensive was on that team too. Yeah. 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 They they were, you know, they were they were a they were an amazing team. And then, you know, after they knew that that's the only year that they had in them. I mean, they went eight and nine this See, year. Last year, last year they had a shot. They lost to the Rams in the playoffs. They almost came back. They were like one possession away. Yeah. Um, from, and they probably if they won that game, they probably would have went to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl. But mm. I mean, I just feel like like what team do you th- if if any team gave him a chance to win a Super Bowl, what team do you think would give him a chance to win a Super Bowl? Not well, saying that he's gonna win the Super Bowl, just a chance okay. to win the Super Bowl. Okay, so if I'm if I'm sending Brady to a team where I think he can win a Super Bowl, I'm sending him to either the um uh, uh I'm sending him either to the Raiders or to the Dolphins to win a Super Bowl, right? Okay. But what I think the smartest thing, because the Raiders, you know, no matter what quarterback or not, no matter what quarterback, all they need is at least a decent quarterback. Derek Carr was a decent quarterback, but he wasn't that good. They were just missing a few components. That's why we said that Lamar Jackson would be a good trade to the Raiders. But their defense, their defense. Yeah, their defense is atrocious. Their offense will score them points, but their defense yeah. will also give up a lot they of need, points. They need to address the defense, too. So I feel like. Tom Brady to them would be a decent thing because then they don't have to yes. pay as much for him. And then the Dolphins, the Dolphins would make sense just because Tua is like consistently on concussion protocol. It literally might be the best idea just to give Tua a year off, just to like get yeah. his head straight, make sure he's not getting injured, and then give just lob up Tom Brady a contract. And that team, I could see Jalen Waddle, uh, Tyreek Hill. Um, uh, just uh, Jaseki, that could be a Super Bowl winning team, especially with the defense that they have. That could be a Super Bowl winning team, but it'll only be for one year. It, they would literally sign Tom Brady for one year. He'd win a Super Bowl with the we win a Super Bowl with the Dolphins and then retire. But yeah. I think that the smartest option for Tom Brady, just as a team, more so than for Tom Brady, I feel like as a team, the smartest place for him to go are the New York Jets because the New York Jets. They don't really have a lot of resources yet, but you can see like, because they've been rebuilding for the past few years. And this year in particular, th- there was a lot of potential for the Jets to potentially make the wild card spot in the AFC East. I mean, we know the Buffalo Bills are stacked and it is hard to complete with the Buffalo Bills. But the whole thing with like going from Zach Wilson to Mike White and the whole, you know, all the Zach Wilson like toxicity that was going on in New York, it just didn't work. So I feel like the Jets could take a really big opportunity here, take a year with Tom Brady to just allow them to like look at potential, like look at new potential quarterbacks, look at a new potential D line, some uh, 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 some secondary uh, support because their secondary has been on and off over the years. So I feel like for the Jets, it would be the smartest thing for them to just lock Brady in to like a one year, maybe a two year contract, not pay him as much, but just have a decent quarterback so that they can at least compete with the AFC East. But if we're talking about Tom Brady finishing his career on like a Super Bowl win, I feel like the Dolphins is the best place for him to go. I don't know if that's Tom Brady's mindset. Personally, I don't think Tom Brady really cares about ending his career on winning a Super Bowl like the rest of us do. And if that's the I case, he does. I think he I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think I don't think when you look at Tom Brady, there's no reason for him to play unless he's trying to win a Super Bowl. He the reason that he's played in the NFL for this long is because he's insanely competitive and he's so driven to win. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I think the only reason he's still playing now is to win the Super Bowl and to prove a point. Okay. I think that when you look at it, I think everyone's saying Tom Brady should go to the Raiders. I totally disagree. I think that the Raiders need a longer term solution okay exactly they have yeah they have they have some offensive weapons but their defense is really bad right now and they need to be able to address it they haven't addressed it yet they need to get a better defense and if you mm-hmm. sign tom brady for one year you're not going to win the super bowl next year and tom brady's going to leave so it's, it's a total it makes no sense 
It makes you, also have, to, no you also have to think about Devonte Adams. The only reason, the yeah. one of the only reasons why Devonte Adams went to Las Vegas in the first place was because of Derek Carr. So Derek you Carr. kind of, as the Raiders GM, you need to give a player like Devonte Adams a reason to stay in Las Vegas. Because if you don't, if you give him one year of Tom Brady, his contract will be done as well. You'll be losing yeah. Tom Brady and Devonte Adams around the same, roughly around the same time, and then it's yeah. like, then you're like, that's such a steep downfall, yeah. and players will just go with him. So yeah, I feel like for the Raiders, they need something longer term. Yeah, that's why for the Raiders, I said you get Lamar Jackson, then you develop a defense. I know that the money is an issue, but if you if you find the money somewhere, then that would be a better thing. Or even if you draft, they have the number seven pick. If they draft the quarterback, they don't usually do this great, but if they drafted a good quarterback and was able to develop him, it's not perfect because you have all these pieces on the offensive side of the ball that could that are ready to win. But it's like yeah. kind of like Brock Purdy. Like you see, he joined an offense that's ready to win and he plays well. It's kind of like you get a quarterback and you put him in a good situation and you and then you use all the rest of your resources, your second, your third, your fourth pick yeah, on the defense and you cheer up the defense. You spend money on free agency on the defense. That might be a better solution. I feel like the two best landing spots for Tom Brady are the Jets and Dolphins, okay? I, I agree. I think mm-hmm. that after I th- thought about this more, I think that the Dolphins are a perfect fit for Tom Brady for two reasons, okay? The first reason is, he would have a great opportunity to win. He has an offensive. The offensive line is solid. It's it's improved over the years. They have Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill, who are great weapons. It'll help Tom Brady throw the ball downfield. They have, and also they're so fast they can make it throw crossing routes and just short routes. It's a perfect offense. Gusecki's a really good tight end. They have tons of weapons. Okay, mm-hmm. their defense is stacked with talent. They have Jalen Philia, Jalen Phillips from UCLA and Miami. Um, they have Bradley Chubbs. Their defensive line is so good, okay? And then yeah. their secondary their secondary is good, too. Xavier Howard, they, they have guys, okay? So we saw this against the Bills. They have Skylar Thompson starting at quarterback, and they still were in the game most, most of the game. So they have Tom Brady as the quarterback. They will, yeah. They'll be able to compete for a Super Bowl and will arguably be favorites in the AFC East, okay? Mm-hmm. The, other, the other landing spot, or the other reason, is that Tua has had three concussions this year, and <laughs> concussions are... are a, unknown injury because everyone knows like oh you have a concussion your brain shakes whatever but they don't know like the long-term effects of these injuries so i feel like it's best for tua to take a year off let him like just let him sit down recover um learn under tom brady who's one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time see his work ethic see everything i know he's in the middle of his career but he's already so injured that it's like it might be better for him just to take a little break yeah not force him back into the action because it's it's dangerous if he gets another few concussions like he it could be really bad so i feel like it's really important to let him sit it out, heal. You you sign him Tom Brady for a, on a one year deal. If you win the Super Bowl, great. If you lose the Super Bowl, then Tom Brady can leave and you replace him with Tua, and yeah. then it allows you to get a quarterback for next year and keep Tua, even if you don't want Tua to start next year. So it, that, that's a good solution. The other solution is for the or the the other landing spot for Tom Brady, I think, is the New York Jets. Okay, the New York Jets is a little more complicated because they have a very good defense, but their offense really struggled this year. Like really bad their offense is one of the worst in the league and i think mm-hmm. part part of that can be attributed to zach wilson but another part can just be attributed to like they just didn't have enough talent on like like they don't have good enough wide receivers Brees hall got hurt early in the year but i feel like yeah. when you look at the jets i think the jets are a good fit i don't know if it's as good a fit as the dolphins but i feel like the jets are a good fit because for multiple reasons you have a good defense so that tom Brady always does well with a good defense okay yeah the offense has a solid offensive line they had a few injuries this year but if those guys get healthy, then they have a solid offensive line. Brees mm-hmm. Hall is one of the best up-and-coming running backs in football. And when Tom Brady has a running game, it really helps him because it protects him in the passing game and he's able to do play action. So I feel like that's a good fit. And mm-hmm. then also, if they're able to sign like a few good wide receivers and you put Tom Brady there, you have a chance to win this year. You're in Super Bowl contention. I'm not, I don't think they would win the Super Bowl, but they're definitely in Super Bowl contention. Yeah. And also, it allows you to have multiple options with Zach Wilson you can either try to trade him his trade value is super low so I don't know what you're going to get for him but you could try to trade him you can keep him and have Tom Brady mentor him I don't know if Tom Brady is going to want to do this but he can just watch what Tom Brady does because Tom Brady is the GOAT he has one of the best work ethics ever I think mm-hmm. it would it would give an example to Zach Wilson if you if you want to keep him so it allows the Jets to have many options of what to do with Zach Wilson because for Zach Wilson they're either going to have to release him or they're going to have to keep him because no one's going to want to trade for him because he has no value right now yeah. so I feel like if you sign Tom Brady, it's a one-year fix. And then if Tom Brady wins a Super Bowl, great. If he loses, then you he get you get rid of him. He retires. He goes to another team, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then mm-hmm. 
it gives you a, a, a spare year to figure out your quarterback situation. You can either keep Zach Wilson, try to develop him under Tom Brady, or you could try to draft QBs like in the second or third round. There's some solid QBs that you can find there. We saw Brock Purdy was good. Mm-hmm. You can find some solid QBs in the later rounds of the draft, draft them in the first round maybe as a backup, but mm-hmm. it, it just gives the, it gives the Jets a year to figure it out with it. Cause they have such a good defense right now that there's no reason to have a bad team because they should be winning games. I mean, you saw this year they had a, they're kind of like the Broncos. They had a terrible, terrible offense. If they had like a decent offense, they'd be a really good team. So yeah. it gives them just that opportunity to, to succeed with a good defense. There's no reason to lead, like let Sauce Gardner and all these guys like just go and wait. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like another question that this brings up is, you know, what happens to the Buccaneers after this point? Because, I mean, you know, they still got guys like Chris Godwin, like Mike Evans. Do they, you know, ultimately, are we seeing in like five, six years time that it's a completely different Buccaneers team with different wide receivers, a different quarterback? Or are they still going to be holding on to these players just because it's a comfortability thing? Like, what do you what do you think the move is in in Tampa Bay? I think that the Buccaneers should blow it all up because they did win a Super Bowl to start it off. So they did succeed at what they were trying to do. Mm-hmm. They've been good for the last few years. But when you look at their team, they're all old. I mean, Chris Godwin is a relatively old wide receiver. Mike Evans is relatively old. They're not like old, like in, in age of sport of sports, but they're just like when wide receivers like Julio Jones, you saw he's on their team, but he's only like 30 years old and he's considered old because he's been in the league for so long and he has no value right now. So they yeah. have a lot of older players. Mike Evans, Mike Evans has been in the league for 10 years, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. But they just have a lot of older players. I feel like the best thing for them to do would be to trade all their valuable pieces, get some picks, and just do a total rebuild. Because they're not going to – even if they get a great quarterback, even if they had Patrick Mahomes, they would not be in Super Bowl contention. They just their, – their roster is not filled out. Their offensive line is old and hurt. Their defensive – the, the, you saw their defense was terrible. They got absolutely yeah. shattered by the Cowboys. I think it's better you get rid of you get rid of um um the linebackers. You get rid of just you get rid of everyone with value. You get a, a haul of picks, and you're the NFL. You're able to turn it around in a year or two with the free agency and the and the draft. I mean, you can get a solid defense. You get you can fix one side of the ball in a single offseason. Okay, so I feel like they just need to get younger at all their positions. They get rid of their older players. And then they just they just retool because they don't have to be a terrible team. They could be a 500 team. But also the thing is their division is terrible. The NFC, the NFC South right now, is the, all the teams, none of the teams have a good quarterback. The Panthers are struggling. The Saints are struggling. The Falcons are struggling. None of them have great quarterbacks. If they are mm-hmm. able to just retool and just get some younger players and then find a quarterback somewhere, I feel like that would be very good for them because they're not in a great division. Even if they have a bad team, they could still make the playoffs. And I feel like it just gives them an opportunity to just get better and have a longer term vision to get back to the Super Bowl. Because there's no reason to just aim to just be an average team every year. You might you have to aim for a Super Bowl. So right now they're not in Super Super Bowl contention and they're going downward. They need to find a way to go upward. And that, that means getting rid of their older players and replacing them with newer players with more potential. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a, it's an interesting situation just because I feel like, you know, you can't really be like, oh, well, if this quarterback or if this player goes to the, uh, to the Buccaneers, then, you know, the Buccaneers are up for Super Bowl contention. I feel like once, you know, as soon as Tom Brady's gone, it's kind of like, well, it's time to rebuild at that point. That's yeah. just that that would yeah. be my mindset on it if I was in uh if I was in the Bucks front office right now. So yeah. Yeah. But um That's anything it for for NFL action. Now we should get into there's some baseball news. Nothing has actually happened, but baseball starting in a few months. I think the world baseball classics in like a month or two, if I'm not mistaken, March. I think it's in March. Yeah, March, yeah. yeah. So, but before all of that, MLB free agency has been crazy this year. It's kind of died down recently because a lot of the players have already signed. But there's mm-hmm. some rumors out there that Shohei Otani, Mike, and the Padres are very interested in trading for Shohei Otani. And I think this is a big shocker because everyone was assuming that the Dodgers this offseason were not making a lot of moves and were not signing a lot of the guys because they were trying to wait and trade or sign Shohei Otani, okay? Mm-hmm. And... I feel like Shohei Otani is one of the most coveted pieces in the MLB just because he can pitch and he can hit. And that's why everyone's saying he's going to get like a 500, 600, 700 million dollar contract, all these crazy things because mm-hmm. he's just so uber talented, right? And now yeah. for the Padres for for it to come out that now the Padres are interested in him. Mm-hmm. I think it's a shocker to the MLB because when you look at this, I don't think it's even feasible for the Padres to do this when you look at like what they're trying to do. Cuz they're already paying Tatis 400 million dollars, Machado 300 million dollars. Soto is a four hundred million dollar player, or and they're not gonna have the money for him. They just paid Bogarts three hundred million, mm-hmm. and then they're gonna try to pay 
Shohei Otani, what, 600, 700 million? Those, if they signed, it's not even possible. But if they signed those six, th- those five players, yeah. that would be already over the salary cap just from five players. You have in baseball, you have a roster of like 27 to 29 players. I mean, it's like, mm-hmm. it's a lot of players. Okay. So to dedicate your whole roster to those like five guys, it just seems a little bit extreme. I understand that they're trying to win, win the World Series. But in yeah. baseball, as we've seen over the last few years, the team that did the best in the regular season every year didn't win the World Series. I mean, the Dodgers yeah. didn't win, win the World Series last year. The year before, the Braves won the World Series with 88 games. The year before that, the Dodgers won in a shortened season. The year before that, the Nationals beat the 100 and I think eight win Astros that year, 107 win Astros. I mean, in baseball, the playoffs are crazy. The, usually mm-hmm. the best team doesn't win. And yeah. I, I feel like to... I don't understand this. I feel like what this means is that the Padres have Bogarts locked up, have Tatis locked up, and have Machado locked up. The mm-hmm. the few options that they might think of is they might try to trade Tatis because of all the issues, but I don't think they're going to do that because he just he fits in San Diego. I don't think they're going to trade him. They might just let go or trade of Soto. That's the most likely, like in my opinion, if they sign Otani, I feel like the most likely thing is they have to get rid of Soto because they're not going to be able to pay Soto. Mm-hmm. And I just. I feel like the reason they're interested in Otani is because they see that they spent so much money on their position players that all mm-hmm. their starting pitchers, Blake Snell, you Darvish, that are expiring soon, they're going to leave because they're not going to be able to pay Darvish and Snell. And even then, they're going to be older, more injury prone. They signed Musgrove, so they have one of their starters. But I think that two of their starters are probably going to leave or they're going to stay on like shorter term deals, cheaper money. So I feel like they, they think that they need another starting pitcher. They're really trying to really push it in the Dodgers' face that they want to win the World Series because they're literally trying to sign every single one of the best players. I mean, this is like more extreme than what the Dodgers have done with like Freddie Freeman, Trey Turner, Max Scherzer. I mean, they were literally trying to, they look at the list of the top 10 players in baseball and they're trying to get all of them. I mean, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if they're trying to call for Mike Trout. Call for, they, I mean, they have like one of the best shortstops in baseball in Tatis. They, they signed one of the best shortstops in Bogart. Machado's one of the best third basemen. They got Soto, who's one of the best outfielders. They have three mm-hmm. of the best starting pitchers in baseball. And now they're trying to trade or sign Shohei Otani, I just feel like it's a little bit extreme. And I feel like it, it's a big deal because the Dodgers and Padres are both trying to get Otani. And I think the Dodgers at this point in time have more resources to actually get Otani because, first of all, the Dodgers have the second best farm system in baseball and they haven't committed as much mo- as, as much money to the future. So I feel like the Dodgers have a better opportunity at Otani. But mm-hmm. I just feel like it's interesting because if the Padres get Otani, like, I, 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 I wonder how much that would actually impact how good the Padres are. Because it, yeah. it, 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 it gets to a point where you're like, you're a good team, but when you keep <clears throat> adding players, you can only get so much better because you can yeah. only be so much better than the next player. So it's like, if you look at the Padres, like, yeah, the, even if they have Otani, they might be, they, they might be the best team on paper and they, they definitely would be the best team on paper. But mm-hmm. I don't know if they would actually, that would actually win them a World Series because who knows how he's gonna, how Otani's going to perform in the postseason? Who knows if Otani's going to get hurt? Who yeah. knows if Otani's going to get fatigued by hitting and pitching, and, he, and the pitching is going to affect his hitting, or the hitting is going to affect his pitching? Like, who knows all this stuff? There's a lot of unknowns. Yeah. I mean, we see in the playoffs some players perform very well, some don't. I mean, we've seen Juan Soto play really well in the playoffs when he had terrible regular seasons, and then the mm-hmm. other side we've seen Manny Machado have terrible postseasons when he's played really well in the regular season. So. Yeah. I think you know, no one knows how Otani is going to play in the postseason. It's a mm-hmm. totally different game than, than the regular season. I feel like it's an interesting thing because the Dodgers and Padres have a very heated rivalry. And I feel like now this this is at the center of it with Otani potentially going to the Dodgers, potentially going to the Padres. And I feel like it's yeah. a big deal. I mean, you know, for me and for like, you know, the salaries of both teams, it doesn't make sense for him to go to either team, like to be fair. I mean, the Padres don't really need him. And the Dodgers still, like, they're still, like, recovering from the amount of money that they spent on, you know, the the Turner era, the Bellinger era, you know, like, they're still recovering from all that. So, me personally, it doesn't make sense for Otani to stay at the Angels because, you know, the Angels, they just can't make the playoffs. It's the weirdest thing of all time. They can't win the division. They can't make the playoffs. So, he's not going to stay at the Angels. But then for all this hype to, like, surround around, like, the Dodgers and the Padres, I feel like it's all just, like, a publicity stunt because at first it was, I don't think he can go anywhere else. He can't go anywhere else because who else has the money to sign him? He's going to cost. He's 20. He's going to be 26, 27. It's going to cost the team like $500 million to sign this guy. Yeah. At the, at the mean, minimum. No one, no one has the money for this. Like the Mariners can't just go spend $500 million on a pitcher and hitter 
Like, I don't think anyone can sign this. And even if, like, when you look at this, as a Dodgers fan, even if you're a Padres fan, do you really want to dish out $500 million for Shohei Otani? Like, yeah. I don't know if it's a good investment. Like, I genuinely don't. Everyone's saying that the value of him is so high because he's a hitter and pitcher, but I feel like that almost everyone's going to, like, hate me for this, but it, it almost detracts from his value because if he gets hurt, he takes away so much more from your team. And yeah. it's also, like, he's so much more injury-prone because he does so many things. And, like, hitting and pitching, they're, like, different motions. They're, they, they use different parts of the body. So he has much more chance of getting injured because he uses more more parts of his body than other like other people like if you're just hitting you don't use all the muscles that you do when you're pitching so he has a much higher likelihood of getting hurt he's already gotten hurt he's already had tommy john before if he mm-hmm. gets tommy john again he's going to be out a year from pitching maybe two years from pitching and he's going to be out at least six to six months to a year hitting so i feel like if you're going to give this guy 500 million dollars the biggest contract in baseball history until he's like 38 years old i mean does anyone genuinely think that shohei otani is going to sustain this level of play until he's 38 years of yeah. age like i don't think anyone does i mean it, it's like kind of like you look at zion and like zion <laughs> is an absolute stud but Dude. i don't think anyone thinks that when he's 38 he's gonna be like lebron like lebron is a freak of nature because he's not only he's so athletic but he's so durable i don't think zion is like durable like he's a very talented player he's one of the best players in the nba he's an amazing player but i just don't know if he's as durable and i think you look at otani he's already had his injury issues for both of these teams i don't know like, I understand the, the talent of Otani is, like, above everyone else because he does so much and he does it so well. But it's like, mm-hmm. wouldn't you rather sign a pitcher for 10 years and a position player for 10 years for $250 million each than one single player? Because one of them gets hurt, then the other one's still there. And if yeah. one of them gets hurt, then the other one's still there. But if you sign Otani, who does both of them, you're still paying the same amount of money. And if, mm-hmm. that, if he gets hurt, then he's just out. And yeah. you have nothing. So I just feel like, I don't know if it's a great investment People might think I'm crazy because, oh, he's one of the best players in baseball. I totally understand. But I feel like in general in the MLB, a lot of these longer contracts don't do well. Yeah. A lot of contracts we've seen have been terrible contracts, longer-term contracts. Where, Like even the Albert Pujols, he's one of the best players, greatest players of all time, top five in baseball of all time. His deal mm-hmm. with the Angels was a terrible deal. He, they paid him $300 million and he did nothing for yeah. 10 years. So it's like you look at these longer-term deals and they get older. Like the Padres are already paying Bogarts until he's 40. Tatis until he's 36, Machado until he's 40. I mean, they're paying all these guys for ages, like until they're like 40 years old. When they have to pay these guys, in 10 years, the Padres are going to be terrible. Terrible. Because yeah. they have they have to pay 40 million, they have to pay 30 million dollars to five different players. And those players are going to be producing nothing. So I feel like when you look at this from both sides, I feel like the the Dodgers need him more because they see that the Padres have improved. I mean, the Padres right now have a better roster than the Dodgers. I just yeah. don't know if for the Dodgers, the Dodgers still need to lock up Bueller. They still they'll still need to lock up Urias. So those mm-hmm. are two starting pitchers they need to lock up. I'd rather if I'm a Dodgers fan, lock up those two guys and yeah. develop our prospects than to give Otani five hundred million dollars and then let Bueller and Urias go. It just it doesn't seem like a feasible thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you really want a hot take, and you know me and my hot takes, they are they are wild. But if you really want a hot take on Shohei Otani and where this dude is going to go and where a justifiable team could sign him, form a team around him and go to the world series. I feel like if, if you're asking, if, if, if someone came up to me and there was a gun to my head and they're like, you tell me where Otani's going or I shoot, I go, okay. You want to know where Shohei Otani, in my opinion, where I think he's going to go? You really want to know? Like, genuinely and okay. people are gonna yeah. people are gonna hate me for it people are gonna be like what is this kid saying whatever bro but he is going to go to the baltimore orioles oh my god there's no way I don't, there's no way he's going there bro no shot no shot baltimore orioles have the number one farm system in the nation you can't pay him they can pay him. Well, th- yes, it would be like it, he would definitely be like yeah, the pay would be. Bro. Yes, this the, it would be as good. But they, I feel like with the Orioles, like their mindset would be like to butter him up a little bit. Be like, you want to win a World Series? You can win a World they, Series without team. They, but they, the catch is, the up- is that you won't get paid as much. They're an up and coming team. I mean, they have Adley Rutschman. They have the best farm system in baseball. They actually almost they were in the playoff hunt last year. They they have gotten a lot better than they were a few years ago, losing 100 games every year. So 
They're mm-hmm. a very good, they're a developing team. They're on the rise. I just don't know if they have the financial capability and capacity to do that deal. But if they could do that deal, it would be a good deal because he would be the star in Baltimore. They need yeah. a star alongside Adley Rushman. And I just feel like mm-hmm. it would work. It's just that like the money, I feel like the only teams that can really get Otani are like the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Padres, <sighs> the Mets, the Red Sox. Think about, it. Think-, think about it. The Orioles haven't spent any money. Like at all. Yeah. Like anyway. No, I know. And I yeah. thought I genuinely thought Trey Turner would go to the Orioles just because, you know, the salary was there for that. He wanted to be on the uh he wanted to be on the East Coast. And I thought it didn't really make sense for him to go back to the NL East. So I was like, well, why not go to the Orioles? Because they're, you know, they were literally like they weren't, I think they were not that far above uh, uh they weren't that far from a hundred for from five hundred. And I think they were close. They were like a 500 team. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like the Orioles, they've got, they've got the potential again, number one farm system in the nation. I feel like, you know, you just, you you know, cause I feel like Otani on paper, he seems like a very humble guy. Like, let's be real. Yeah. And I feel like just to, you know, I feel like he will, he will get paid a considerably like lower amount of money which is you know not the greatest but it will have perks to it it'll be like we'll pay you this much but you won a world series you didn't do that with the angels and they paid you how much just to like show up and not win like you know would you rather would you rather get paid a lot of money and not win games as a baseball player that's, not but that's that's the thing that's not, the some players do that like like some players just take the money i mean we've seen chris bryant go to the, the rockies who are not going to win and just take the money and we've seen yeah. tons of players just go to bad teams like Anthony Rendon went to the Angels. Just take the money because it's money. But some players yeah, but you, you got to you got to think about you got to think about the fact that you know these guys have already accomplished it. Chris Bryan took the contract in Colorado because he's he's already won a World Series. He went to the Giants yeah, but, and they had the, he had they had the best record or not? No, yeah. they they were the number no. one team. They had the yeah. best record, right? They had the best yeah. record. Yeah. They they won the NL West and they went to the playoffs and stunk it up like we all knew they were going to yeah. do. And he was like, yeah. all right, well, you know. I'm here for the it, money. <laughs> it, it depends on the player. A lot of players do different things. Some players want to just go win and they, they'll take a pay cut and some players just want the money. So we'll see. I don't know what, what Otani is. We're not, we're, we don't know yet. The thing is he's going to he, he's his ceiling for the amount of money he's going to get is so high that no one knows, even if they drop it down, it might be like 300 million. So no yeah. one knows what he's going to get paid, but I feel like it's just interesting that they're saying that the Padres want him. Cause the Baltimore Padres want him. I mean, is it going to come out tomorrow that the Padres want, like, Mike Trout, too? Do they want, like, a package deal with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani and Rendon? I mean, it's like – I mean, the Padres – are going to be point. in debt. Oh, my God, the Dodgers will be in debt. No, the, we're not, I said the Padres, the Padres. The Padres, the Padres will be in debt. Both teams yes, will I be know. in know. I know. I'm, I'm not saying the Dodgers. I don't need all those guys. I'm saying the Padres, bro. This is 100% the Padres. This is not the Dodgers, bro. <laughs> the Padres. This is the Padres, bro. This is not the <laughs> But that's basically it for today. We're going to yeah. get into the um, NFC and AFC divisional games in a few days. Um, Champions League content will come out soon. That'll start in a month. Today, that, that Ronaldo uh, PSG versus Al Nasser game. Let's check the score of that right now. That, that was the crazy game. I think it was 2-1. to one. One. I think it finished 2-1. Yeah. To oh, my God. Guys, guys. This game, the PSG Al Nasser game, ended 5-4 PSG. 5-4 PSG. Let me just, let me just recap this. So, yeah, Messi scored in the third minute. Okay, then Ronaldo. We're not talking penalty. about soccer. We will take another episode to talk about this game. No, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about. It. I'm just gonna go over this quickly. I just want to go over this quickly. Ronaldo scored in a penalty in the 34th minute. Then Marquinhos scored for PSG, two one PSG. Then Ronaldo scored again in the 45th minute, in, or in, in the the first half in um, added time. So it was two two going into halftime. Then Sergio Ramos scored for PSG. Um, Jang scored for Ria, uh, for um. Al Nasser, so it was 3-3. Then um, Mbappe scored. And then I think PSG also got a red card, but Mbappe scored. Aked, I don't know how to say that, but Aked TK scored. So it was, it was 5-3 PSG. And then Talisco scored for um Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Arabia team, Al Nasser. But dude, 5-4 PSG. 5-4 PSG. That's crazy, bro. And, and then we Ronaldo missed it scored just so goals. we could talk about football. And we missed it so we could talk about football, but it's okay. It's the mess that Messi's the goat because PSG won as expected. Ronaldo scored two goals, but one of them was a penalty, so it was a fluke. Like you don't want to hear that. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah, so we got that was a crazy game. So yeah, that's it for today. Not... <laughs> if you know, you know. Oh my god, but... we'll get into that. We'll get into that in a few weeks.
Yeah, well, uh, so that's going to do it for um, episode 18. Uh, again, make sure to follow us on our social medias. Be one of the commenters that are constantly commenting your yeah. opinions that, you know. With a chance and, to make it onto our haters video. With a chance yeah. to make it onto our haters video. Yeah, We're going to have a video coming out soon about it. So be sure to find a video, comment on it. You know, we love the we love the funny ones. We love the threats, we love honestly. The, haters. the threats are the we, funniest ones. We love the haters, bro. We yeah. love the haters. We have raised the haters. Keep it going. We love the comments. The comments are hilarious. So just keep it going. And so that's yeah, weird. just just make sure to follow us TikTok, Instagram. Those are you know yeah. the big comment ones. So you know that's where we look out for. Uh, we also have Twitter to kind of like notify when the podcast episodes comes out. Nothing too special there. And then for the podcast episodes themselves, make sure to uh, go on Spotify and YouTube. Follow us there. Full episodes are on there. But yeah, that's gonna do it for me, my co-star Dylan. And we will see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.